So right now, guys, we're going to be talking all about our bones. Um, pretty much just your joints, your RA versus your OA. So your osteoarthritis versus your rheumatoid arthritis, and really how these two things are different. So whenever you guys are thinking about arthritis, just think about the joints themselves. So the joints that connect your bones. So pretty much your, when you sing that song, you know, the hip bones connected to the bone, bone, your um, humerus bones connected to your radial and ulnar bone, you know what I mean? I don't, okay, something like that. So pretty much um, for your osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, it's all about joints. Okay, so they connect at the joints, okay? Let's just say that that is our joint right there. Let's say it's this joint right here, okay? So, this joint right here, let's say, is, uh, is filled with cartilage. And this cartilage makes sure that our bones don't rub together or have friction. So if this was our um, cartilage, it's pretty much just like a big pillow cushion that's between your joints making sure they don't rub, okay? So in osteoarthritis, with osteo, Osteo just means, osteo meaning bone, bone on bone action, just meaning that we have decreased this cushion here and we're degrading it so much that our cartilage there pretty much no longer almost exists. Now we're having bone on bone friction and it really, really hurts. So, your patient's experiencing um, bone pain or osteoarthritis pain will manifest, let's see here, um, crackling when they start getting up and moving around. This is just your bone on bone action. So in the medical field, we can't just give someone a cartilage transplant. Um, you know, we can do surgery and kind of coat the bones with some type of synthetic gel or some type of synthetic metal so they do not rub. Uh, but the main thing that we do in the medical field is uh, we do cortisone shots. And so these, um, these cortisone shots brings down the inflammation and it kind of puts a little buffer in between. And that cortisone just put that little buffer and when we infuse that big needle into the joint, we're pretty much just filling it up with some artificial cushion, artificial um, um, cartilage a little bit, okay? So we put that cortisone into the joint. A few weeks go by, some cortisone spills out and we start using that cortisone so much, the cortisone disappears in a few weeks. So we have to go back to the doctors when the pain gets more severe, bone on bone action. And we start rebooting ourselves with just cortisone itself, okay? So the main signs and symptoms with osteoarthritis is, let's see here. is that you're going to get crackling on your bones, okay? When your patient gets up to walk, crackle bones. And this usually happens with almost like 99% of our older population. When you get old, you already know that you're losing nephrons in your kidneys. 3% of your glomerular filtration rate in your kidneys are decreased after the age of 65. When you get older, you already know that you are decreasing your pacemaker cells in your heart. You're losing your heart cells. 
When you get older, you already know that your cartilage is going to be depleted because of years and years of rubbing. So when you get your patient up to walk around and ambulate, this is why grandma says, oh, I ache in my bones, right? Because this bone on bone action from no cartilage, you're gonna hear some crackling bones, okay? Um, some other things that you want to avoid is some weight-bearing exercises, okay? Let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. Weight-bearing joints are going to be most effective. So, for instance, your hip and your knees are going to be most effective most affected, most affected by this. So your hips and your knees are going to be most affected because it has, you've been having years and years of movement and weight bearing on these two joints themselves. So we're causing a lot of de degradation of this, um, of this cartilage, okay? So this cartilage is being diminished we got that bone on bone action. So, you're gonna teach your patients when you're a nurse. You teach your patients no weight bearing exercises. Okay? So, this is almost kind of a contraindication um, because we know at least being a personal trainer for such a long time, that weight-bearing exercises are the best for your bones. Weight-bearing exercises build up muscle, and muscle helps to surround the bones and keep it very tight. As muscle surrounds the bones and keeps it very tight, you, um, you prevent um, osteoporosis, and you prevent a decalcification of the bone itself. But, you know, what's more important at this point? You know, um, not making brittle bones or decreasing the pain between our joints. So, it's like, you know, what's going to kill you the quickest? I mean, not kill you, but what's going to um, cause more pain? The joints right now? Or if grandma falls and breaks a bone that's going to cause, you know, more things later on. But right now, we're going to do no weight-bearing exercises because we're trying to prevent pain from osteoarthritis, okay? So, just remember that your patient's going to have crackling bones, weight-bearing joints, your hips and your knees are going to be most affected by this osteoarthritis. And let's see here. To diagnose it, we do a laboratory test study called an osteocyte test study. So basically we're getting a pretty much like a biopsy of the joint itself and seeing how much osteocytes are inside the bone itself, okay? Um, one more thing with osteoarthritis, you have two conditions, one called Burchard's another one called Hebshon syndrome. So Burchard's, you have little um, nodules that will um, kind of form at your fingers. And I'll show you a picture of it right here. Let me get it here. Or rheumatoid here. Where is it at? If I can find it. Okay, I'll probably have to use it in the next slide, but but pretty much you have a degradation of the um, the uh, what am I saying? The cartilage itself between the joints. Okay, so let's go into rheumatoid arthritis next.